So we come to our main event of the evening. Cody Rhodes versus a mystery opponent picked by Seth Rollins. Another entrance. So now they've done a 15-minute promo earlier in the show, plus the opening package. And they got 20 minutes left on the air, so they're going to have a 20-minute main event. If we talked about wearing welcomes out. So here comes Seth again, big, uh, you know, the big entrance, the suit, the music, the whole nine yards, and he does a big introduction of Kevin Owens, the same guy that just did a 15-minute comedy lie detector segment <laughs> and threatened somebody or else and then walked off on him. Now they don't have enough talent for three hours, so... The guy that keeps her elsing and walking off is about to do a, a job of some description here in an unrelated angle because they don't have enough guys. It really is sometimes like Raw is the old promotion where the weather's bad or guys couldn't make it there. Yeah. It's just a small house show where you have like a tag team match and then two singles matches featuring the tag team wrestlers and then everything else featuring the same wrestlers over and over. That famous Knoxville TV that still exists, uh, thanks to Golden Boy Joe Kazana. It was fucking snow in East Tennessee, and none of the guys could get to TV. Ron Wright was there because he lived there, and Ron Wright could get anywhere. And the other the rest of the hour of the show was Jerry Lawler and Jim White having two singles matches against Tommy Gilbert because Tommy Gilbert's partner wasn't there. And... And they did the interview angle with Ron Wright, and that was the fucking show. That used to happen a lot in the old days when the card wouldn't be that huge to begin with, and you were supposed to be at the studio for TV an hour before the show went on the air live. So shit happened. But anyway, um, they did two minutes of the match with Cody and Owens, and Cody did a dive, and Owens racked him into the rail, and they went to the break. And they came back from the break, and I noticed this. I don't know if you were back snoozing but i was done yeah i was done okay well they were going through all the motions of having a match but just that i mean they're palming guys heads and flinging them through the ropes and they're going and it's a pace but it's not aggressive it's it's in kind of an an uninspired spot show match and i could imagine that owens was probably tired from being out there for 15 minutes of lie detecting and whatever but it just he got some heat on Cody. Owens goes to the top. Owens did a senton, you know, the flipping thing where they land with the back like Jeff Hardy's doing potato and people now, right? Yeah. He did a senton. Cody raises the knees, but Owens landed on Cody's knees for real. Right top. He could have blown both his PCLs. He squashed him up like a fucking accordion. And then they took a bump over the desk. After they, they go out on the floor, they're fighting on the floor, they take a bump over the desk, and suddenly Seth Rollins' music starts playing, and out he comes, and they go to another commercial. Now there's eight minutes left on the air in the main event, and they've just gone to a break. Talk about breaking up momentum, and the, the tease to, to keep us after the break is Seth's coming. What's he going to do? Well, guess what? When fucking, when they come back, they're just wrestling. Seth's not a fucking participant or an entity. He's just hanging around. He didn't do anything. So Owens hits a splash off the top, gets a two count. And another lead-assed swanton gets a two count. And Cody starts making a comeback, finally, but he gets powerbombed for another two count. And then Owens goes to the top again, and Cody gets up and fucking some way he's trying to, they're doing the thing on the turnbuckles, and some way Owens gives Cody a fisherman suplex off the top rope, and Cody gets his foot on the ropes. And then I wrote, Jesus, where's the cannon? And then Cody backdrops Owens onto the apron. He takes the full bump on the apron hard and rolls off on the floor. And Seth Rollins is telling him, get your fat ass back in there and do something. And the referee's counting him out. And at nine, Owens tells Rollins, well, it's your stupid match. And waves him off and walks off again. 
That's the, they ought to start. Kevin Owens has music to come out on his entrance. And then every time he leaves, they play the walkaway music from the Incredible Hulk. Do, 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 do. So he walks out at, as the referee is at nine. He's waved Rollins off and my DVR froze. Because they were that close to the end of the show. So apparently, Owens took a walk and got counted out. Cody won. And this took a long, long time to do. What were you dreaming about at this point? How lucky I was not to be watching WWE. It's a rotten show. It's terrible. You're surprised when it's good. You're not surprised when it's bad because bad is typical. Well, see, that's what lowered expectations. They get you thinking, yeah, I'm going to watch this show and it's going to suck pond water. And then they throw one good thing in and you're just over the fucking moon. But unfortunately, folks, you know, because Brian has been feeling puny and he did nod off because this raw ranks right up there with hypnosis as a great way to go to sleep. But if you neither want to subject yourself to three hours of raw nor hire your own hypnotist, then you know how the best way to get to sleep is and how most people get to sleep is these days. And that's with the incredible powder from Beam called Beam Dream. And Brian, of course, you know that poor sleep can cause weight gain, mood issues, poor mental health, and lower productivity. And sleep in less than six to seven hours a night is linked to reduced white blood cell count, which, of course, the white blood cells are what protect our body against illness and diseases, virus, bacteria, germs, russos. The white blood cells are our first line of defense, so having a consistent nighttime routine is so important. A better tomorrow starts tonight, or if you want to get an early start, this afternoon. Introducing Beam Dream. That's what's being brought into this conversation. It's the world's most innovative functional wellness brand is Beam with unique products for everything to make you sleep, to make you recover. And boy, sleeping's one thing, but recovering from sleep, that's even harder. <clears throat> but right now, folks, today, you're going to get a special discount for the Dream Powder, Beam's best-selling healthy hot cocoa, which contains natural sleep-promoting premium ingredients, triple lab-tested. I don't know what that damn Labrador has to do with this thing. He sleeps in a corner on his bed all the time anyway. But he's tested it three times. There's no THC in this, but still get it. And 98% of people surveyed fall asleep faster when taking Beam Dream. 99% of people experience better sleep quality. And 1% wake up having vivid memories of a previous life. You just mix the Beam Dream into hot water or milk, stir, and enjoy 30 minutes before bedtime or... If you want to operate some heavy machinery, drink a double dose about an hour beforehand. Folks, you can find out. Drink a regular Forbes. dose the regular way, as recommended by Beam. Yes, yes, you can find out why Forbes and the New York Times are all talking about Beam and how they're reporting on the people that are slowly coming back to consciousness and can't wait to try it again. And if you don't love it, you'll get your money back, guaranteed. Actually, they'll tell you they sent you your money. You'll be so confused when you wake up, you won't really know the difference, and you'll forget about it after a while because there are short-term memory issues. However, for a limited time only, you can get $20 off when you go to Beam, that's B-E-A-M, beamorganics.com slash J-C-E, use the code J-C-E at checkout. Beamorganics.com slash J-C-E and use the code J-C-E for $20 off. You will sleep like you are a member of the Transylvanian undead with Beam. That's right, but we will be alive with Beam, and you will feel alive when you wake up from Beam. And hopefully <laughs> I'll have some Beam after this show, because I could really use some. You need, you need some, uh, some Beam or some Dream or some Steam or something to you. Uh, as a matter of fact, what is keeping the folks awake over there in the Arcadian Vanguard... Uh, 
division here this this fine week oh sinuses are not another great fucking week on the arcadian vanguard podcast network get information about all the shows on twitter at super podcast or on facebook facebook.com slash arcadian vanguard a few notes the latest episode of the mid-atlantic championship podcast with mike sempervivi and roman gomez is out right now reviewing the first episode of mid-atlantic wrestling tv from 1983 Hear it today at midatlanticpod.com or look for the Mid-Atlantic Championship Podcast wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Also want to make mention of the latest episode of the Mid-South Wrestling Television Review with myself and Mike Mills out right now. Go to midsouthpod.com, also available wherever you find your favorite podcast. Hear the early days of Jim Cornette and the Midnight Express in Mid-South Wrestling, December 1983, the Mid-South Wrestling Television Review. Of course, I also want to mention Shut Up and Wrestle with Brian Solomon, SUAWPod.com, available wherever you find your favorite shows. This week's guest, David Marquez. Hear that today. Once again, Shut Up and Wrestle with Brian Solomon, SUAWPod.com. And of course, the 605 Super Podcast, The Mothership! This is the second week in a row where there's a house guest wondering what the hell just happened in this house. But opening week Star Wars is out. Hear it today. Hear a fun talk about wrestling and baseball at 605pod.com or available wherever you find your favorite shows. Look for the 605 Super Podcast. And now I'm feeling it again in my throat. The Mothership. I was about to say, see? Fuck. As Bobby Eaton used to say, fuck around, fuck around. Pretty soon you won't be around doing all that mothership stuff at me and your condition. You're a sick man, Brian Last. You're getting sicker all the time. Ugh. Time is drawing near. You don't have much left. What? I have lots left, I hope. I can I can tell. I can tell it by the sound of your voice. You're on the downhill slide or the uphill slide or whatever oh, it is. No. You're not doing any good. 